Welcome back to another episode of Consciously Clueless. I'm your host, Carly, and I'll be your guide on this journey from consciousness to cluelessness and back around again. Today on the podcast, I talk to Kathy Davis. Kathy is a plant-based lifestyle coach and recipe developer, the CEO of veginspired.com, and the author of two cookbooks, the 30-minute whole food plant-based cookbook and the super easy plant-based cookbook. She helps people successfully transition to a plant-based way of eating that supports a fast-paced lifestyle without requiring hours in the kitchen or the added stress of what am I going to eat. Kathy and I had such a good conversation. Don't forget to check out Patreon for bonus content from this episode. Here we go. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to chat with you. Yeah, I'm excited to be here, Carly. Thank you. So the podcast is called Consciously Clueless. And that came from this idea of me just being on this journey of learning and kind of almost laughing like, yeah, sometimes you think you're with it and you've got it and you're conscious and you have achieved enlightenment and other days you're like, wow, I know nothing. (laughs) Um, So I like to ask guests right in the beginning, kind of just where you feel at right in this moment on the spectrum from conscious to clueless. Yeah, I love that. I think that's fantastic. And I I love the whole mindset of like, we feel like we're running along all of a sudden we're like, bam, I totally don't know. So one of the things that I have learned, you know, I've been studying mindset and just kind of opening my own horizons on what I know and what I don't know. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things I learned is that I truly don't even know what I don't know, right? (laughs) There's, there's just so much out there. Yeah. And even though I feel like I've kind of experienced all of these, you know, things on, on mindset and personal growth and health and wellness and plant-based living and just life in general, I know that there's so much more that I can learn and Mm -hmm. really so much more to experience and so much growth. So I guess I would say that in this point, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm conscious that I, I don't know it all. Like I am aware and I'm thankful that I'm aware because it allows me to, you know, hire experts and read books from people and really start to listen to those people who either have what I have, what I want or are where I want to be and, you know, are doing the things that I want. So I'm grateful to have learned exactly what your podcast is about because it truly is about learning that there's more more to figure out, more to experience. Yes. I love that. I'm just going to take that clip and use it as my intro from now on as an explanation of why I'm doing this podcast. That was perfect. (laughs) Awesome. Glad I could help. Check if we're done. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It was great talking to you. Uh, so you are veg inspired. That is your handle. That is, that is your thing. Where did that come from? I love that name. Oh, thank you. So it's funny. It came from my Pinterest board when we were first (laughs) adopting plant-based eating. Okay. I had a board called vegan inspired and actually was vegan and then inspired. And I'm like, I really want it to be more about the inspired part. So I swapped the A and the I and veg inspired was born. And that was about, well, we made the transition to plant-based eating about seven, seven and a half years ago, Okay, but the, I didn't start veg inspired as a brand until February of 2015, 2015. So about six, seven, I don't do math very well. Seven, six years ago. Six, six years. Yeah. So when you say we, is that you and your partner? Yes. My husband, he was actually the whole the whole catalyst behind it. He found a couple of articles that contradicted and he said, I need to learn more about this optimum eating for health, found plant-based eating and I was the resistor. Oh, interesting. Oh no, no, I'm not giving up burgers and blue cheese dressing, right? Those things that you just, you have those things. I think we all, when we were making the transition had that that thing that we were like, I'll do it all except for this. And you can't imagine your life without it. Exactly. Yeah. And it took me about six months to make a full transition from standard American diet to eating plant-based vegan. Okay. Uh, but I wouldn't go back. Like I, I love it. It, it was a life changer for me. So I'm, so, I'm grateful he made that assumption or made that 
intention. So he was just reading about nutrition and he was like, something piqued his curiosity and that was kind of it. Yes. Isn't that crazy? I love that. Yeah. And he found the starch solution first. Okay. And so a lot of the foods that we ate in the beginning were more of that high carb, low fat way of eating, which terrified me. Yeah. Uh, You know, I had been on every way of eating every diet and I put that in quotes, but I really had tried everything to kind of maintain this healthy lifestyle. And I never really had it. I always struggled with my own personal, you know, belief about my body and my weight and things. And eating high carb was terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. But we did it. And then we got more into the vegan food products and, you know, became a little bit more junk food vegan over the years, but still sticking to that more whole food oil free way of cooking at home. So when you put diet in quotes, tell me why you're doing that. You have, I feel like you have thoughts. (laughs) I do. So I am because I feel like I've tried everything. I was the girl that would start again on Monday. Let's binge all weekend and start again on Monday. Mm -hmm. I was the Weight Watcher who ate zero point foods until dinner time and then binged on all the, all the, all my favorites, the burgers, the glass of wine, the cookies, all the things. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I really accepted creating a lifestyle of healthy habits that I learned that dieting what didn't work. That was when I really learned that a short-term diet is always going to give you that same cycle. And it was about adopting this healthier way of living in general with all the choices that I make, the daily movement, the day-to-day habits, the day-to-day food choices. And it was really about taking that control back. So it sounds like you went from shifting to diet to lifestyle. Yes. And it, and that I, you know, I say plant-based eating changed my life, but that mental shift, that mindset shift has made all the difference with the way that I eat and the way that I live and the way that I make choices about food and just everything in general. So you transitioned to plant-based vegan about seven years ago. And then, which if I looked at your website and, and, you know, I've kind of was creeping on your social media and everything. And if you wouldn't have told me, I was like, I would have assumed that you've been, you've been at this. You're like an old pro, like you've got it. You've got a book out, you've got the website. Like, so you didn't just transition to plant-based, you went all in. So what inspired you to then like want to share and want to create things? Yes. So we, and I say we, so we transitioned, like I said, seven and a half years ago. And the, the inspiration for Veg Inspired really came about because I'm a trained educator. Mm -hmm. I'm a, you know, former school teacher. And I really wanted to share the information. I wanted to show people that eating plants can be easy. Mm -hmm. And that in, in the beginning, I really, you know, I've gone through these phases where at some point I was that poor preachy vegan that nobody wants to have at the dinner table because you're, we've all been, if you've been been there eating vegan for a while, you know that you get that somebody says something and you're like, wow. And you get on your vegan soapbox. And I was there and I realized very quickly that that wasn't necessarily the way to win people over that. It (laughs) really, really truly is about eating more plants. Mm -hmm. If I can help you eat more plants, if I can show you easy recipes, if I can inspire you to want to eat more plants, you're more likely to do it. Mm -hmm. If it's, if it comes from this place of education and inspiration and motivation and passion, people tend to be more open to that versus, you know, the preachy part. So with Veg Inspired, I really wanted to make the safe place, the safe place where anybody, no matter where they were on their journey, could find that inspiration. They could find the recipes. And it, it was just born into this, I, I call it a brand education. It started as a, you know, recipe blog. Okay. It's really evolved into more of this plant-based resource to help people make this lifestyle change. So you have a cookbook out. And 
you have two, two you have cookbooks. two cookbooks out excuse me you have two cookbooks out were you I know you said you were an educator but were you always a chef not really and a lot of what I learned so my husband loved to cook which is another reason why he started much faster than I did because he could get in the kitchen and do the things yeah and the more he did the more I would help him and then I would get in the kitchen and I would be inspired to toss things in the blender and stick the, not don't stick the spoon in while the blender's running but taste <laughs> taste you know stick the spoon in and taste it after when the blender's off yeah um, good advice and <laughs> <laughs> I try I try to give good advice always an educator <laughs> never stops <laughs> So I really wanted to look into ways that I could share these easy recipes that I was making. And a lot of it comes from, we left this house with a nice kitchen and a dishwasher, and now we're in an RV with, I mean, we have a beautiful kitchen in our RV, but it doesn't have the same space doesn't have a dishwasher. My two hands are the dishwasher. And I really needed to learn ways to make it happen faster. Yeah. When I was cooking at home, it just seemed like I had more time and more space, but working from the road and working in the RV, it seems as though there's less time, even without the commute. And so being <laughs> able to make, make recipes that happened faster and were much easier was, was a passion behind the first cookbook, which is the 30 minute whole food plant-based cookbook. And then after writing that one, I said, well, there's got to be ways to make these even easier. Let's try sheet pans, no cook, and the super easy plant-based cookbook was born. And that is full of really super easy recipes. Like I said, there's a whole, a whole section on no cook meals, which is great in an RV, and then a section on one pot, and then there's a five ingredient section and another more 30 minute recipes. But that's amazing. Was, I might need a copy for the bus. Yes. You'll love the super easy ones. Do you have a full kitchen? This is bus? my kitchen. <laughs> nice. I mean, it's, it's, I'm still setting everything up, but I've got this situation and then what the computer's on is another surface for, you know, putting everything, cooking, all that jazz. So, and I'm in a short Ooh, bus. I so I, it's like real limited. <laughs> I love that you live in a bus. I love that. I think that is so fascinating to me. Well, and it was so cool when I was looking at your stuff. I was like, oh, she lives in an RV. Like, we should be friends. <laughs> like, we've, we've got uh, some parallels here. So do you drive around the country? Like, what's, hold on. I've got so many questions. Let me back up. How did you transition to living in an RV? Okay, so that's a great story. We really were looking at, ways that we can make our kitchen prettier for our cooking videos for Veg Inspired and kind of fell into this, maybe a tiny house, maybe a tiny house on property. And then I said, well, gosh, if we love to travel, what if we bought a tiny house on wheels and took it around the country? So it was, well, it's just about three years ago now that oh, wow. we listed our house to be sold bought our, we have a fifth wheel RV. So we actually tow it with a, with a big full-size truck. And the, the process moved really fast. We listed the house in July, uh, bought the RV. We met with a realtor in July, listed the house in August, bought the RV in August. So we didn't have one and we'd never towed anything this big. Oh God. <laughs> fun time. I'm yep. telling you, it's all a good story, right? Oh, it all, yeah. I mean, the first time I drove a bus was when I test drove the bus, you know, I was like, yeah, I do this. You don't know what you don't know, right? Exactly. You, to you gotta it. try. So you, you got the RV in August. Accepted an offer on the house during our garage sale in September <laughs> with a 30 day closing. <gasps> so we closed in October. Oh my goodness. So there was no turning back. So it was like, hope this is a good plan. And it was the best plan. We yeah. have been to 20 states. We just put the sticker for Idaho on our side of our RV. So we've been to 20 states. Wow. We have been to national parks all the way from the furthest 
south one in Florida, which is the Dry Tortugas, and we are headed to Glacier National Park, mm. which isn't the most northern because you've got Acadia and then the parks in Alaska, but it is very high up there north from the north. So it's exciting and we're seeing the amazing country and we work, we both work from the RV. My husband works for a company and I run my own business. And it's just, it really has been an amazing and inspiring decision. Wow. That's, well, you're inspiring me to not only live in this thing, but to like take off. <laughs> that's next. Uh, have you been to Minnesota? Is that a sticker on the side of your RV? It's not yet? a sticker yet. We want to do Minnesota and Michigan and Wisconsin when we can do them during the summer and hit those, those no other Northern national parks up there. Yes. And well, let so me know. Much. Let me know when you're, when you're in Minnesota. Definitely, definitely. So back to the transition to being vegan, what were kind of like the struggles or some of the hardest parts for you? I know you said like burgers and blue cheese, but you know, during that six months, what were the things that you were like, oh, I just don't think this is going to work? I didn't like beans. <laughs> that's, that's a rough start. Yes, a huge rough start. It was a struggle because it felt like every recipe had beans in it. Yeah. And I didn't love beans. And my husband was so amazing. He tried every recipe he could possibly try to get me to like beans. He would make them. And if I didn't like them, I would just pick them out. It became kind of comical. Yeah. Um, and then he made Cuban black beans mm. in, the, in, in the pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. And they were creamy and not that weird texture. Not a beany, weird can bean kind of texture. And I was sold. I said, you can make me that every day for dinner. I'm in. I loved them. And so there's still some beans that I don't like. There's still cans that I'll buy and think, I don't think these are all the way cooked. Yes, yes. But I've come a long way. And I, I would say vegetables. I liked most vegetables, the standard ones that you get, cauliflower, yeah. lettuce, tomato. I didn't love tomatoes. I love them now. Uh, carrots, green beans, things like that. That was easy. But beets, Brussels sprouts, those were all new and exciting and a little terrifying to try yeah. those new new vegetables. So it was it was an interesting transition, but I found a lot of comfort in you know meals that were made with lots of potatoes. Mm -hmm. rice, cashew sauces, things like yes. that, that were familiar. And that's always what I tell people. If you have somebody that you're cooking for, that is a little bit of a resistor, don't introduce things like tofu and tempeh, give them familiar foods, familiar flavors, mm -hmm. turn your potatoes into tacos, mm -hmm. make twice baked potatoes. Don't bring home all the weird vegan processed foods that they don't know what they are yeah you know, totally we always make make fajitas for people mm. when we're cooking for people that we that may not eat plant-based we'll make fajitas because they can mix and match the the ingredients and most people will eat salsa and guacamole and lettuce totally totally an easy one and it had to be it had to be really nice to have the support of doing it with a partner and not having that resistance. Cause I know that that has been in my experience and other people I've talked to, that is a struggle when it is one person on that path and one is not. Yes. And I'm sure in the beginning it was challenging for him mm -hmm. because, but it, it wasn't, you know, the challenge for me was right. I had to make my own food if I didn't want to eat what he cooked. <laughs> yeah. But the, the challenge for him was we would go out to a restaurant and I was still eating a burger and oh, he was eating the plant-based option or he was trying the plant-based option and in the beginning that can be a challenge too because you're that's unfamiliar mm -hmm. so it takes some trial and error definitely so running your own business from the rv um what all now has veg inspired grown to be like what different things are you doing with the brand yes Yes, we, we, I say we, I'm a we of me and an assistant. <laughs> that's a we, that's, that's a we. That's a we. 
Uh, Veg Inspire has really evolved from a recipe sharing site to more of that go-to plant-based resource, right? We share blog posts. I do a lot of educational videos on plant-based living, a lot on mindset. I recently launched a group coaching program that takes people from that that point of frustration to that successfully plant-based intuitive lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that was really my journey over the last year and a half of going from kind of that junk food vegan to more of that whole food plant-based intentional decisions to really find that optimum wellness that I thought I'd been, you know, I thought I'd reached before, but now that I've been eating whole food plant-based for a year and a half and I'm maintaining a, a much more comfortable, healthier body weight and tons of energy mm. and just this general love and joy of the food that I'm eating. It really, really has evolved into so much more than a recipe site. It's allowing me to share that with other people and make an impact in more lives. So what happened a year and a half ago that made you want to transition to more whole foods? Yes. So we were parked in Daytona Beach. We had found an amazing little vegan restaurant that we frequented way too much. <laughs> and they had amazing burgers. And again, I keep saying burgers. That's my, that's yeah. my go-to. I just love a good, a good, love a good vegan burger. I love it when they're homemade at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. I just, they're my favorite. And this place knocked it out of the park. And we ate there a lot. And I was ordering some medication. We travel full time with three cats and I was ordering oh, wow. some medication for them and I have to weigh them for that. And so I stepped on the scale to weigh the cat. And when I put the cat down and weighed myself, I was like, um, I, I'm at a weight I don't want to be at yeah. at all. This yeah. is the highest weight I've ever been. Now, full, discla full disclaimer, I knew I didn't feel good. I knew my stomach hurt. I, there were signs mm -hmm. my clothes didn't fit. It should not have been surprising to me, but yet it still is, but yet it is. And one of the things that, and I know better, right. I know how to eat healthy. I'd studied all the whole food, plant-based eating, the daily dozen, Do yep. you know, Dr. McDougal, Esselstyn's. I knew all of that. And I knew that it would just take a mindset shift to really stick with it and create the lifestyle that I, I wanted, which is one where it's focused on intention over perfection. Mm -hmm. It's about the choices that we make around food. And I remember tell it coming down the steps of the RV into the main area. And I said to my husband, I'm, I need to, we need, I need to make a change. I, I can't keep eating these kinds of foods. It's, I don't feel good anymore. Mm -hmm. Like that scale was just the final straw. I knew I didn't feel good. I probably had lots of symptoms of prediabetes and all of those yep. standard American diseases were starting to show up because I was eating such a high fat, maybe not cholesterol, but so much high fat processed mm -hmm. like junky food. And there is a place for that. Totally. When, when there's, when there's intention around it. Yep. And that's what I love is that when, as we embarked on this, luckily for me, my husband was like, all right, I'm in, let's do the whole food plant-based <laughs> lifestyle. I said, okay, but there's one caveat. We're not going to be perfect. And he said, we don't have to be perfect. We have to be intentional. It's about the things you do every day, not yes. about perfection. Yes. Good for you for being willing to like talk about that part of your vegan journey too, because there being vegan doesn't mean you are the epitome of health, you know? And I, and I don't want to say that to like knock vegans down or plant-based eating or anything like that, but especially in 2021, I can get any sort of substitute for anything I want, which is really cool, but also, whoa, <laughs> it's, it is. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I love that you talk about that because I think there is um, sometimes not the same space held for people who want to talk about like, oh, I wasn't healthy on a vegan diet, on a plant-based diet. And that's, that's okay to say, you know? We didn't really cook with oil at home. So we were doing the things. Yeah. But it was the, it was the daily habits. It's the, oh, well, I don't feel like cooking tonight. Let's just run to that burger place. Or I don't feel like cooking. Let's get takeout. Mm -hmm. And Trust me, I 
love that there are vegan restaurants. We are full supporters. When we're in a new city, we support them, but we might support them only one time. Right. Not 17. (laughs) (laughs) Not breakfast, lunch, and dinner. (laughs) As much as I want to. Yeah. I just know, I just know that it's, it's not opt, it's not optimum for me. It doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So you talked about Um, or you've mentioned a few times the idea of mindset and kind of mindfulness stuff. Is that something that came to you more after transitioning to a vegan lifestyle? Because for me, those things definitely felt like they were related. It actually didn't. Interesting. I found, I found more of the mindfulness and mindset studying before Mm. going, going vegan. Mm -hmm. Although I will say that Some of the information that I read, actually a lot of the information that I read does link eating more whole, whole, I'm not going to say plant foods because a lot of the, a lot of the books and information just say whole organic or more natural foods recommending things, you know, even some of the books recommend things like whole food supplements. I don't necessarily supplement. I use B12 and then I eat a very balanced, you know. I eat a lot of food, fresh foods to get all the nutrients that I feel I need. But I will say that through the mindset work and then learning about health and wellness, it really all ties in. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me that you found it as, as such a link, because when you're eating these foods that are nourishing your body, right? Lots of antioxidants, lots of fresh vegetables, colorful meals that make you smile when you look at them. It really does bring about this, this growth within yourself. And I think it really helps you find that, that joy and just that general clean energy. And I don't mean clean energy, like (laughs) how we power our electric. I mean, like in that inside your body, you have this burst of energy from the foods that we eat. Definitely. Absolutely. Is there any future cookbooks in the works for like a super, super, super easy or (laughs) anything like that? Or are you kind of like moving away from that? There might be a third cookbook on its way very soon, Uh, but that will probably be it for a while as I focus a little bit more on my clients and my and my coaching and some more recipes for veg inspired that we've been trying to do in the RV definitely some more camping recipes. We, we have the carrot dogs and we have some other recipes that work really well if you're tenting or things like that. But I'd like to get out and do more grilling recipes, maybe some yeah. campfire recipes when when we can get to a place where campfires are, are more allowed. Yeah, that's really fun. I've thought about that too, the idea of kind of like vegan camping information or which you know translates to RV, bus life, any of that stuff. Yes. And it's fun because it's different. Yeah, 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 definitely. And there's something about too, even trying some of those recipes, you know, you can be in a house, I suppose, and try them. And it does feel like you're like, ooh, we're camping tonight. I'm going to try some of these fun kind of summery recipes. That's fun. Yeah, backyard camping. We'll say, you know, they can they can use my RV recipes in their backyard and it'll be just like they're camping too. So I have to ask, how is being on the road with three cats? <laughs> Well, (laughs) fortunately for us, we haven't had any grace us with their presence during this recording, but occasionally they'll walk in front of the camera, knock things over, jump on, jump from the table to the counter. They are really great actually in the RV. They, they found their little hiding spots and places that they go. They do get crated when we travel. So they ride in the truck. Oh, okay. So the first few trips, when we first hit the road two and a half years ago, they cried a lot. I was just going to say, how much crying did you listen to? (gasps) Oh, so much crying. But they've since learned the routine. And now when the crate comes out, they usually run and hide. And then, then we get to search and find and, you know, pull them from places to to put them in their carriers but did you have pretty good did you have three cats when you started the journey or did you acquire them along the way we had all three of them when we started the journey so 
they have been with us since the beginning. Uh, two of them are in their in their teens, and then uh, one is seven, so eight. He's eight. Oh wow! So they they're fun. They're there's they sleep a lot. I think if they were kittens and played, this would be kind of a small space. But since they're older, they they run back and forth every now and then. But they're mostly sleepy cats. Well, that's pretty good. I was imagining when you said three cats, I was imagining a little more chaos than that <laughs> in the RV. At dinner time or breakfast time, they're chaotic. They're I bet. Very, they they let you know it's time to eat, but for the most part, they're sleepy cats. That's amazing. So. Um, as an educator, what type of educator were you? What was your background in that kind of led you here? I meant to ask that earlier, but we've been zipping around, which I love. Yeah, so I was an elementary school teacher okay. and a reading teacher. And I taught for seven years before moving into a non-education administration or uh, office administration business position. And then... I just kind of evolved into blogging and recipes and social media and marketing and things of that nature by doing it, right? You, right. You figure it out, you get thrown in and you just do it, so. Do you miss teaching? I definitely miss the kids. There was so much, it was so much fun to watch those light bulbs come on and make those connections around what we were teaching, but I, I think I'm, I think I'm okay teaching adults. I think I'm okay with the coaching and the, and the being the guide and the inspire and the motivator through, through the accountability coaching that I do. So it's been a really, really welcomed position in my life. It's, I feel like I found my thing. Yeah. It feels like a natural transition. Like it feels like it made sense the way you're describing it, I guess. Definitely. So when you are on the road and you're traveling from place to place, like what are a few of those go-to recipes that you'll just do again and again and again? I love rice, beans, salsa, avocado. I usually make my own pico de gallo, Ooh. just simple, simple tomatoes, uh, white onions that I rinse. That's the key to keeping them from being too bitey. Mm. Some lime juice, some cilantro, a little bit of salt. I love making my own pico de gallo. I could put that on anything and it just, just the flavor, the flavors that are all infused together just make me so happy. It's so bright. Uh, yes. That's what I love about it is that bright, fresh taste. Mm -hmm. uh, another go-to I would say is we make a lot of tempeh bacon. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just simmer it in some some spices and some soy sauce and maple syrup and things. And we use it a lot for either breakfast sandwiches or BLE, BLATs, tempeh bacon, lettuce, avocado, tomato. Yum. I love tempeh. I think it is such an amazing product. Did you always love it? Um, I'm trying to even think what was my first introduction. I don't remember a time not liking it. I actually really, I think, always liked the texture. And um, tofu was not, at first, I was like this, you know, all the stereotypes, all the, all the things we hear, all the silliness. I was like, first of all, what is this blob that I'm supposed to do something with? It's wet. <laughs> um, but yeah, tempeh I liked. Interesting. So when I, my first experience with tempeh, I thought it was so sour. Oh. And I remember telling my husband, this is too bitter for me. We have to do something about it. And then we learned the low and slow method to simmer it low and slow and whatever you're simmering it in, barbecue sauce, veggie broth, uh, the like, I don't know, bacon -y, soy yeah. sauce, maple, yeah, yeah, yeah. marinade, and it worked perfect. And now I love it. I just, I find it to be awesome. And when we can find it on the, our road, we can find it when we're on the road. We usually buy a few packages. Um, do you have any like fun, um, I love asking people this, like any friends or family or anything that you have these like successful conversion stories that they're plant-based now that you never thought it would happen or? Not really. I wouldn't say that anyone has, I wouldn't say that anyone in my 
friend and family circle has gone plant-based because of me, Mm -hmm. but there is definitely more of an awareness of eating more plants, which I love. My mom and dad will actually send me pictures of their meals every now and then. And I'm like, oh, it's a plant-based meal we can eat together. Oh, I love that. That's really fun. And my brother actually came into town when I was writing the first cookbook. And so he got to recipe test a mushroom recipe. He loves mushrooms. So I made it intentionally for him and he went back for seconds. So I would say that's a huge win and always a fun story I like to share because it's the recipe that was made for him. Oh, I love that. And and like you said too, you're like, okay, let's let's play on what you already like, what I know you already like. You like mushrooms. I'm going to make you a dope vegan mushroom recipe. And I'm going to show you that you don't have to miss anything. Like that's such a good strategy. Exactly. And it shows people that they can eat familiar foods that aren't scary. Right. That's the one thing everybody's always like, well, what's in it? Mm -hmm. Tahini. It's just sesame seeds. I know. (laughs) Not anything scary. (laughs) Tofu, when you look at that, that could look a little scary, but yes, but nutritional yeast, I don't even know how to explain that. So I try not to, ex- I try not to expose people to that with them knowing, because I don't want to be like, well, it's got nutritional yeast. And they're all like, oh, yeast. What am I going to do? What I know the word yeast really is not helping in the branding. We need a rebrand for nutritional yeast. <laughs> Can we all just agree to call it nooch? and call it a day? That's what I'm saying, but I've tried to get it going and people are like, Ooh, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I put nooch on the shopping list once when I was at my parents and um, my stepdad is the cook of the house and he is mostly cooking plant-based now, not totally, but um, I put nooch on there and he was like, what? <laughs> I was like the nutritional yeast. I'm, I'm just trying to get a thing going here. <laughs> like, we're trying to start a fad. We're, we're trying to get it going. We're so rebranding. We say the word yeast every time. <laughs> Nobody wants to think that you put yeast in their food if it's not bread. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll have to take this up with what's Bragg's, right? They have the yes. nutritional yeast bottles at the co-op. I'll have to, we'll have to write them a strongly worded letter. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what kind of like mindfulness or mindset practices do you use that you feel like make have made the difference in your life the last few years like what does that look like when you talk about daily habits what does that look like for you one of the one of the big things that I do a lot is visualizations Mm -hmm. I used to I used to create this a vision board quarterly every year I'd add to it and just change it up as things happen and In fact, I'm one of our cabinets is open and I can see the picture of the truck and the fifth wheel that we had on the US map on our, we had it in front of our TV because we didn't use the TV a lot when we were, before we were going on the road. Yeah. And it's here. I brought it with us in the RV and it's just pinned up in one of the cabinets as a reminder that when we keep those things in front of us, we we literally manifest it. Exactly. And I actually learned us from a a strategy and I wish I knew the woman's name of the YouTube video that, that I was shared with me, but she used index cards. And so living in the RV, I don't really have space for a vision board and it would just, things just get moved around and you pack up and move often. So I started using index cards and I will actually sit and flip through the index cards and close my eyes and visualize myself walking on the beach with family around in the, you know, in the bathing suit, in, in the, with confidence, like the things that I want to happen, the, the goals I have in life, the people that I impact, I I have all these amazing goals. I want to start a foundation and fund those low funded animal sanctuaries and, you know, vegan, I, I call it the, the people that have vegan inspirations, like the people that really want to have passion behind plant-based or vegan options. And I really want that to be a part of how I give back. And so I use the visualizations and I've been doing that for a while. I actually read the book, the 5am club. It was recommended to me by a friend. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm actually doing it. I get up at 5am, do my 20 minutes of movement, my 20 minutes of that meditation, visual visualization mindset work, and my 20 minutes of reading. 
And it's amazing because wow. it's, it's such a great way to start your day. Like your blood's pumping and then you sit down and you just focus on all the things that you want and all the ways you want to make an impact and all the, the dreams and goals. And you sit with yourself and really work on that internal work. And yeah. then the, the 20 minutes of reading or studying books or podcasts, things that I just will give me that education, that foundation, because I'm always growing. I'm, I don't know it all, right? We talked about it at the beginning. And so I want to be immersed in more information about health and wellness, more yeah. information about mindset, more information about RV living. There's just so much out there. And it really gives me that foundation of the day. And then I'm off to make an impact. And I'm right. inspired and motivated after spending that time with myself and with the inspiration and motivation from whatever education I'm reading at the time. That's amazing. I think that we so undervalue the impact a solid morning routine can have on our day and then on our life. Like even 15 minutes of something can make, like make or break your day. I totally agree. I think back to the times in the morning when I worked outside the home and we hadn't left in the RV and I would get up in the morning and I would get up early and I would read and I would get, that was back in the day when Instagram was uh, chronological. So you'd see everybody's posts from the night before. Yeah. Am I dating myself? I know how old I must sound right now. No, I totally agree. I have so many Instagram problems. Don't even get me started on my quarrels with Instagram right now, but <laughs> yes, back in the day. And I would, I always drank my coffee and sat there and like one of the cats would sit with me. Mm. And those days that I didn't get to do that, I just felt rushed. Yeah. I just felt on edge. It was like the rest of the day couldn't, couldn't go the way that I wanted it to, because I didn't start with that morning routine. And so getting that back and really focusing on that, that time with me has, has definitely given me more of a value like you said, to that morning routine. Well, that's really beautiful. And I um, am slowly, through a, a, for a numerous amount of reasons, my morning routine has not been as solid as it usually is. So you're inspiring me to push even a little harder, remembering of why I do it in the first place. Is the there... why is always the key, right? Knowing the why. Yes, knowing the why. That's so interesting you just said that. I say that all the time. Uh, find your why. Um, so is there anything that you're wanting to share? If there's any like burning desire in your heart that I haven't given you space to anything that you are like, I, I need to tell you this. I don't think so. I think one of the big takeaways that I have just from this conversation in general is that there's so much room for us to grow and experience new things. So whether you're listening and you want to try more plant-based eating, or if you're a resistor like I was, or you don't love beans, I, I always suggest try, keep trying. Yeah. If you aren't ready for tofu yet, try tempeh. If you yeah. aren't, if you want to try tofu and you're not sure what to do with it, look to somebody who does love it, see how they eat it yeah. and really give yourself space to make those trials and, and errors and really grow as as you're experiencing the new things. And that's with anything, right? We didn't know anything about RV living and here we are now. I knew nothing about a bus when I bought it. I can tell you that much. <laughs> I was- And look at you now. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, where can people get in touch with you? Cause I know they're gonna wanna look up everything you just talked about. Absolutely. So you can find me at Veg Inspired on Instagram, but I also have a free community on Facebook, Veg Inspired Foodies. Nice. It's the easiest way to find it is to do veginspired.com slash foodies, and it'll take you to that Facebook group. So I'd love to connect with anybody listening. I, I always think that's fun to learn about people, and especially when they're all over the country and we travel, it's just great to know people all over the place. So I'd love to connect with anybody and of course. share anything I can do to help. I will put all of that in the show notes so they can get a, uh, a hold of you really easily. Thanks. Yeah. I love that. Well, thank you so much for um, chatting today. I really appreciated it. You're welcome, Carly. I really appreciate you letting me come on and share my story. And it's just so fun to talk to, to other people spreading the, the joys of plant-based and wellness and 
now you're a bus liver. Look at that. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So, um, are you willing to try a rapid fire round with me? Okay. Yes. Just whatever comes to your mind. I am, I've played around with these questions a little bit. This is a newer thing we're doing. So for our Patreon listeners, we're just going to see what comes up. Just say this first thing you think of. No pressure. No pressure. Okay. After I'm that in. introduction. <laughs> um, what's the one concert you'll never forget? Aerosmith. <laughs> this is, we're, we're starting off really well. We're starting off really well. <laughs> um, what's your all-time favorite vegan meal? Burgers. Burger. Yeah, we established that. that. We definitely established that. Um, what is something people get wrong about you? Oh, that I'm too loud. Mm. I mean, I probably am too loud, but that I'm like loud and obnoxious, not just loud and fun. I think you're, I think you're loud and boisterous and fun and I relate. So don't worry. I love it. <laughs> Women can't be too loud. That's, I've decided that in general. That is a good motto. I'm going to, I'm going to keep that one. Please, please do. What's an embarrassing moment you'll never forget? Oh my gosh. Where, how, how do I pick just one? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wear black clothes because everything ends up on my chest. Every <laughs> I get a, I get a brand new white shirt. I drop a blueberry. I mean, it's not like stuff's spilling out of my mouth. It's just like that one <laughs> random thing. I just, I like dark clothes because I spill all over myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. Um, Sloppy eater, I guess. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh, oh, I want to talk to animals. Oh yes, yes, yes. That's on my list too. That's on my list too. I want to talk to animals or I want to fly. I don't know. Both would be great. Well, flying would be fun too. Yeah. Uh, what's your least favorite chore? Oh. Well, I used to say doing the dishes, but that's right up there with doing the laundry because both of those in an RV are not as convenient as you'd like them to be. Yes, yes, I agree. Um, when you daydream, what are you dreaming about? Ooh, bungalows in Mexico. Bungalows on the water in Mexico. That's my new, my new waterfront daydream is to be in the premier waterfront bungalow well, I was somewhere else, but then I found out that they had them in Mexico and I was like, well, that's closer. I'm going to go. There. I love that that answer was literally right at the tip of your tongue. That is, you are there. You are ready. Um, what famous person would you love to be best friends with? Ooh, I don't know. Hmm. Probably Reese Witherspoon. Cute. She'd be, <laughs> she just seems sweet. She just seems great. Right. She seems like she'd like really be in your friend. corner all the time. I love that. Um, when do you feel the most confident? When I'm cooking. Mm. Um, I just have, I just love it. I love that you now love it. Like, I love that that is something that's happened for you. Um, what's the best thing about your life right now? Oh, my view right in this moment is this beautiful little nature stream. And we just left Yellowstone the other day. Oh. And I, I have so many best things about my life. I can't complain at all. Oh gosh, you, I, I, I love you. You are so fun. <laughs> um, Thank you. And last but not least, what is something in your life you need to make more time for? Probably turning off social things and <laughs> maybe I mean I feel like I'm always outside I feel like I'm always in nature at the national parks but man if I could just have a little bit more time if I could just make a little bit more time less screen time more outside time would, would be my answer beautiful that's perfect you nailed it you crushed it way to go you made it through that was so fun thank you for I love that little kind of just snippet of getting to know someone in a different way yeah, I love that. That was, that was really great. And I'm, I'm glad that we tried it and that we did it and that it turned out fun. Yay. Thanks. I, I don't know if I actually said this, but that was, you're the first person I've tried that with. I didn't want to make you scared, but <laughs> you did great. Well, thank you. This um, is fun. 
Oh yeah, this has been great. I hope that we continue to connect. I, um, you are a lovely person and I would love to keep connecting with you in the future. Thanks, I appreciate that. Um, if you could send a bio and your favorite picture of yourself, and this episode should be out in two weeks. And I okay, will so let you know. Two, or let's see. I can give you an exact weeks. date. So here's the thing, my third cookbook, and I should have told you this before we started, but I get I get distracted. I need like a list of those things to remember. <laughs> my third cookbook gets announced on Tuesday and it goes on sale August 20th. So if you want to do a giveaway or anything like that to promote the podcast, we can do something like that too. You can think about how that fits in. Don't feel obligated. No, that Um, sounds so fun. It should come, um, this episode should come out on the 28th of July. That's like perfect timing because I'll have already announced the book. I'll have already announced the book. And so we'll be building up pre-orders so we can do a giveaway, you know, however that works into your social media. I will be on vacation. Okay. As a self-employed person, are you ever on vacation? <laughs> that I'll be on vacation starting the 28th. We'll be at, that's when we'll be at Glacier National Park. Okay. So anything that I can do to get this set up ahead of time, let me know. My VA is also on vacation that week, which okay. is- crazy I, I can't tell somebody who's hourly so I can't take vacation yeah so, that yeah um, I will um I will get things set up and then maybe email you early next week to just like solidify some things but that sounds so fun I'm so down yeah I love this I love connecting with you I'm so glad that we were introduced and that we've got to do this this was really fun and I was on your Instagram too earlier so I connected with you there and anything else I could do to support you or whatever I'm happy to do that Oh, thank you so much. You are a gem. Um, I will be following up with you soon. I am very, I'm actually really excited to edit this episode because it was just like such a fun conversation. I'm excited to listen and uh, see what little nuggets came out and I will be in touch soon. Sure. And anything that you have that I can share on my, you know, if you, if you do the, cause you do the clips, right? Yep. Yep. I can send you all of that we can post those as well and you know cross promote so that it drives people to both channels awesome i love that awesome well thank you so much well, thanks for this opportunity i'm so happy to be able to share my story and help inspire your listeners yes i have no doubt that it will i will be in touch with you soon have a beautiful rest of your day awesome thanks you too carly See bye you later Thanks for listening to another episode of Consciously Clueless. If you enjoyed that episode, hit subscribe wherever you're listening. If you want to help me get this into the ears of more listeners, send it to a friend, text it to a family member, share on social media, and tag me. Whatever you can do really helps me out. If you're curious about what else I offer, head over to patreon.com slash consciously carly for yoga, for health tips, for behind the scenes podcast stuff coming out soon. There's so much stuff over there. It's really fun and I would love to see you there. Until next time.